Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be bringing you guys another brand new comics review. Today the issue in question is Spider-Man Spider Shadow. This is my honest review. Um, I'm going to be telling you guys what I thought of the issue, the story, the art, um, and we're going to be going over the plot. So as for the creative team of this issue, um, on writing we've got Chip Zdarsky. Of course he's got a lot of Spider-Man experience. Back a couple years ago he had uh, a pretty long run on Spectacular Spider-Man, which is just like Spider-Man's second series basically. Um, and then he also had a really great miniseries called Spider-Man Life Story. Uh, that was really good and that's like some of my favorite Spider-Man content that's ever been made by Marvel. But now he's getting another shot at Spider-Man, they just can't keep him away from the character. Alright Chip, I hear you've got a pitch for me. Yes sir, I do. And a good one too. <laughs> nice rhyme. Well, let's hear it. Alright, picture this. A world where Spider-Man... No, Chip, you're not allowed to write any more Spider-Man stories, remember? I know, but this would be in an alternate universe, so it doesn't count. Oh, alright then, go on. So imagine a universe where Spider-Man became Venom. Chip, we already did that story a long time ago. E well, yeah, but this time it'll be written by me. Good point. So what's gonna happen? Well, first Spider-Man decides to keep the suit. Uh, then he gets really angry and he decides to beat up Hobgoblin. That's all that happens? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, at least for the first issue, that's part one of four. No, no, you only get one issue. Oh man, you should have told me that earlier. Too bad the first issue's already out. What? How? And then the art on this issue is by Pascal Ferry, who I'm pretty new to. I haven't actually read any of the, their other work, but the art is pretty solid in my opinion. It is kind of cartoonish at times, uh, but then the colors back it up well enough so that it's, it's still good looking art. So you've probably seen by now in the corner here, we have a little uh, cool What If logo that Marvel just designed. And this is actually a mini series. This is issue one of four. Um, and that's a first for What If. What If is basically a series that Marvel has gone through many iterations of. Recently they did one shots relaunching it, but uh, it's just a classic Marvel series where it's basically the title explains it, but what if uh, something else happened that changed Marvel history? What if Jane Foster wielded Mjolnir? What if Spider-Man kept the Venom symbiote? That was a classic issue of what if, and now this is basically the exact same idea, but I'm sure they're going to end up doing it differently. But throughout all of the issues of what if that Marvel has published, They've never done any miniseries. Each issue has always been a self-contained story, sort of a one-shot. And this time around, for this relaunch, uh, they're doing miniseries. This is actually something that I think uh, didn't need to happen. I feel like one issue for a What If um, is just a great formula for a good story. I think Marvel was doing good with that. And making a whole miniseries out of it just uh, kept the story going really slow this issue. And it felt like this was just one-fourth of what could have been a single issue. Uh, that was one of my main problems with it, but we will be getting into the good parts of it later on in the plot and everything. So in regular comic continuity, uh, Peter Parker ended up going to Reed Richards and uh, letting him experiment on the symbiote. And then once told that it was a living being, Peter gave it up and then it bonded with Eddie Brock and so on. All of the Venom lore. But in this case, uh, where everything goes wrong is that Peter Parker keeps the symbiote after Reed Richards tells him that it's a living thing controlling him. Basically the idea is that he goes down a dark path uh, further and further into the kind of violence that Spider-Man would never inflict on the criminals that he fights against. At this time, Spider-Man was dating Black Cat. They would actually go out at night and fight crime together. And Peter had just dropped out of college. Um, Aunt May was very angry at, at him for that because uh, he wasn't living up to his full potential. The issue starts off with a dream sequence. Uh, these actually happen a couple times throughout the issue whenever Peter's trying to get sleep. And it seems that uh, this is like the state that he goes into, these nightmares that he sees. Uh, when the symbiote is, has taken control of him, the symbiote would go out in, at night when Peter didn't know and would fight crime in a more violent way that Spider-Man would never do. But when he wakes up, he decides to shake it off by going on patrol just to fight some crime. Spidey comes across some criminals who are trying to mug an old woman in an alleyway. Um, and he manages to take them down, but almost loses control while he's beating up one of the criminals. This is the symbiote uh, slightly tweaking what he does. Little does Peter know um, that it could get a lot worse if he keeps uh, holding on to the symbiote as his costume. After getting a little bit more sleep without symbiote interference, uh, the next day, Spider-Man is patrolling and comes across Hobgoblin, who has been a thorn on his side at this point in uh, continuity, and frustrated at how many different times Hobgoblin has uh, gone to prison and escaped, just how many times he's committed crimes, Spider-Man takes him down and unmasks him, embarrassing him in front of everyone. Hobgoblin's secret identity is Roderick Kingsley, and at this point, Spider-Man is finding that out for the first time. 
Uh, he's really angry and threatens Hobgoblin, saying that Spider-Man plays for keeps now. Peter doesn't even really know what he's saying. This is obviously the symbiote sort of taking control um, and tweaking his actions. Later at night, Spider-Man has a talk with Black Cat, and she tells him that uh, playing for keeps, really taking down the supervillains, possibly even killing them, would really be the best way to go about things. From experience, Spider-Man knows that all the villains are just gonna break out of jail again. It always happens in comics, no matter how unrealistic that actually is. But Peter uh, is suspecting something going on, so he takes the suit to Reed Richards, and while the suit is being experimented on, Spider-Man's able to get some shut-eye, uh, get some extra sleep, uh, while he's in the test tube that Mr. That Reed Richards is using. But when he awakes, Reed Richards uh, gives him the news that the symbiote is actually controlling him. Uh, and this is definitely the turning point. Pretty much everything up to this point in the issue, which is about halfway through, was the exact same as regular Marvel history. But at this point, Spider-Man tells Reed Richards that he can't tell him what to do. Maybe it's best if he just keeps the symbiote because it's amplifying his powers, makes it easier for him to take down villains. So he swings away from the fantastic for headquarters knowing that he had made the wrong decision and that uh, they would come after him later try to take the symbiote away from him. Peter is not feeling good about his decision and he knows that the only person that'll make him feel better is Aunt May. Even though they have not been having a good relationship lately, he goes over to her house to try to make things better. They start to sit down to dinner and Aunt May is forgiving him for dropping out of college, just telling him that she wants the best for him, for him to live up to his full potential. But before they can get any farther, suddenly the room explodes and we find out that Hobgoblin is behind it all. He was embarrassed in front of the public by Spider-Man when he was unmasked and he's getting his revenge. He had been following Spider-Man around somehow. We don't actually see it in the comic, but uh, he had figured out his secret identity in some way. So obviously Spider-Man is really angry. His symbiote uh, is able to get the best of him in these times when he's just lost control. He fights Hobgoblin and takes him down easily with the extra adrenaline. Um, but then realizes that Aunt May is still in the burning building. But he can't go inside because, of course, the Venom symbiote is badly affected by fire. Uh, it won't let him go inside, and at this point it tells him clearly in his head that it can't go in. He knows that it's a complete living creature communicating with him at this point, but he needs it to take down Hobgoblin. So at this point the symbiote pretty much takes full control of Spider-Man and morphs into this more like Eddie Brock Venom-like shape that we see on a huge splash page as it confronts Hobgoblin. Really beating him up and then leaving him pretty much for dead hanging from a pole. So that's where this first issue leaves off. That's the whole story. Like I said, it's really not much. This is actually even an oversized issue. It's 30 pages, which is more than average. This just seems like it could be the lead up to the main part of the story and lead up issues aren't that fun to read, right? But I'm a definite, but I'm at least liking that Marvel is relaunching their what ifs. That's always been one of my very favorite parts of Marvel, seeing what could have happened in the Marvel universe but didn't and uh, this is just in time for the What If TV show, of course, the new animated series that Marvel Studios is coming out with. But I'll definitely be picking up issue two. I'll at least give the second issue a try. I'll probably finish off the miniseries anyway. Uh, it's always good to read Chip Zdarsky's Spider-Man comics. But as for my very final score of this uh, particular issue, I usually give you guys a final score, something out of 10, just to let you guys know what my ranking of the issue is at the end of these videos. So for this one, it's a 6.5 out of 10. I know that's not great, but I think that this miniseries has a lot of potential and they just needed to build up to it in this issue. But before we go, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you did enjoy this video at all. You can also hit that notifications bell, which is sitting right next to the subscribe button. Uh, if you click it, you'll be notified every single time I post a new video if you don't want to miss any. So that's everything from me for today. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Bye, guys.